Well, we begin tonight with more speculation about where Edward Snowden is and where he is heading. Just over an hour ago, reports started coming in that Bolivian leader Evo Morales' plane was forced to make an emergency landing in Austria on suspicion that Snowden might have been hiding on board. Now, Bolivian Foreign Minister David Choquehuanca said that it was a lie and that Snowden was not on that plane. Associated Press reports indicate that the plane was rerouted to Austria after France and Portugal refused to let it cross into their airspace. President Morales was in Russia attending an energy and gas summit. He sat down for an exclusive interview with RT Spanish earlier today, where he told reporters that he would absolutely consider granting Snowden, Snowden asylum. WikiLeaks announced today that Snowden has applied for asylum in no fewer than 21 countries, including some of the very countries that his NSA documents prove the U.S. was spying on, including Austria. For the latest on Edward Snowden's international plight, I'm joined now by political commentator. Sam Sachs. Sam, uh, let's start with the latest. What are we getting from these revelations, these, these rumors? Well, this is another bizarre twist to the story, but it appears that the uh, Bolivian presidential plane is grounded in Austria right now, and it seems like France or Portugal the, that denied the plane uh, airspace believes that Snowden may be on, on, on board this plane. I find it very strange that France would take such a stand denying uh, a, a plane belonging to a president of a country that you're not hostile, that you're an ally with, uh, into its airspace, unless it, it was com completely convinced that Snowden was somehow on board. And of course, as you said, uh, there, these these rumors are being denied. Snowden that uh, from from Bolivia are saying Snowden wasn't on the plane, that this was a lie, and you know wherever this came from, they have no idea. And Ecuador's chiming in, saying that this is a big deal, and they want investigations into what exactly is happening here. So right now, we have no uh, evidence as to where these suspicions came from, do we? No, I, I don't think we do. Uh, you know, President Obama last week said that he would not be scrambling jets or anything like that to intercept a plane with a 29-year-old hacker. Um, of course, France and Portugal are NATO allies. You know, they didn't quite scramble jets in this instance, but by denying airspace, they're basically, and you would assume that a plane flying from Moscow uh, to Bolivia needs to land somewhere to fuel, and that's likely what, what the plan was here. Now that they were denied this airspace, they had to force a, a landing into, uh, into Austria. So, yeah. Obama's not going to scramble jets, but it looks like uh, NATO allies may be willing to, to, to assist him in blocking uh, Snowden's flight anywhere if he is indeed on this plane. So let's pause the conversation here and take a quick look at some of the nations and how they are responding. We are just getting word today that WikiLeaks uh, and uh, Edward uh, Snowden had filed for asylum in 21 different countries. WikiLeaks, of course, was helping him out. He's got a, a WikiLeaks uh, person actually accompanying him through all this. So uh, let's start with the countries that flat out said no or are unlikely to grant Edward Snowden's asylum bid. Austria, Ecuador, Iceland, Ireland, Italy, the Netherlands, Norway, Spain, the Switzerland all said that he must be president in the country's soil in order to ask for protection. Brazil won't respond. Finland hasn't processed the request. France said asylum is a non-issue. Germany and Poland said his argument isn't strong enough to be granted asylum. India flat out said no. And Snowden withdrew his request from Russia after President Vladimir Putin said he must stop leaking documents. Now, to the best of our knowledge, Bolivia and Venezuela are the only countries that offer the former NSA contractor any ray of hope. Meanwhile, there's no information coming out from China, Cuba, or Nicaragua in terms of these government responses. So, as I had mentioned, Sam, Austria was one of the countries that said that he has to be on Austrian soil in order to get uh, any kind of uh, a request through for asylum. So, if he was, in fact, on that plane, uh, could that be a huge difference in this Edward Snowden? in case. Well, it could be. He's suddenly on Austrian soil now, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Austria is really willing to go. Austria is not a member of NATO. Um, there might not be as much pressure on Austria from the United States uh, when, it, when it comes to this issue. Uh, but yeah, that would certainly change issues. Venezuela in, Equ in Ecuador, or Bolivia now, uh, seem to be the likely best options for Snowden. Interestingly, those are two countries also that are kind of uh, wishy-washy on whether they've even re received asylum requests from Snowden. They've kind of been on the fence about that and given conflicting reports of whether they've actually received asylum requests, which might suggest that they want to 
you know, played under the radar until, until any moves are made. And finally, Sam, something that I do want to bring up is that the U.S. is currently hosting two former Bolivian leaders that they had actually granted asylum to a couple of years back. Back in 2011, uh, Bolivia's Supreme Court of Justice ruled uh, that seven former military and government officials were guilty of genocide. Two of them were Gonzalo Sanchez de la Sada, and the other one is Carlos Sanchez uh, Bersain. So could that play into this whole thing? It could, and this really illustrates the double standard here that the United States is committed when it comes to this issue. Pressuring countries uh, like China to hand over, uh, hand over Snowden when the United States has been more than willing to grant uh, individuals in China asylum. Even Ecuador. I mean, Ecuador is a big issue. There's two bankers who live in uh, South Florida right now who are living a very cushy life who've been charged with pretty serious crimes in Ecuador and wa Ecuador wants them extradited and the United States has refused. Sure, and let's talk about what uh, what he, we do from here. What Edward Snowden does from here. Let's say that Venezuela or Bolivia or w one of the other host of countries that he's requested asylum from actually grants that asylum. Yeah. I mean, as far as I understand, he can't get out of Russia. He can't get into Russia. So where does he go from here? It's it's going to be tough. I mean, it, it's going to have to be a sneak away at any point, or Russia's going to have to issue him provisional travel documents. I mean, he got out of Hong Kong. We learned because uh, Ecuador. Uh, they're saying accidentally issued these documents which allowed him to leave Hong Kong and make it to Moscow. Now in order to leave Moscow since the United States has revoked his passport, he's going to need some sort of provisional documents to, to leave the country. And whether that happens or not, we'll, we'll, we'll see. And finally, Sam, let's go back to this airplane. If, uh, just logistically walk us through this, if he was in fact on that plane, would that be considered Bolivian territory then? No, I mean, if you're flying into another country's airspace, that's their airspace. This, this was talked about with the uh, flight from Moscow to Cuba that Snowden was supposed to be on. The plane will, f you, the flight usually comes down the east coast of the United States, which would be entering U.S. airspace, which would mean the U.S. has the right to come in and intercept the jet and force it down, not shoot it down, but, you know, force it to land. That So there was talks of having to take a deter. A, kind of detour around U.S. airspace down to Cuba. So you, you would have to figure out in this flight for Snowden, this flight for asylum, you have to keep into account what countries you're going to be flying over because they have domain over, over their own airspace. Very interesting. Thank you so much for staying up with the latest details and for uh, keeping us informed. Political commentator Sam Sachs. Yes.